So I now want to teach you a very key strategy for working with complex and technical writing and making it clearer and more coherent and having better flow. A lot of writing is made unnecessarily complicated by poor structure. So let's start off with an example. I'm going to read these two out loud and you decide in your head which one you like better. People are injuring themselves at home, work, and out in public from slipping and falling. The material of the shoe sole, the material of the floor surface that the individual is walking across, and a contaminant like water or oil that may decrease friction between the two materials all contribute to slipping. Okay, now B. People are injuring themselves at home, work, and out in public from slipping and falling. Such slipping is caused by three main factors. The material of the shoe sole, the material of the floor surface that the individual is walking across, and a contaminant like water or oil that may decrease friction between the two materials. If you are like 90% or more of people, you preferred version B here. And the purpose of this workshop is to show you why version B works better and how you can make your writing more like that. And we do this by using a key strategy that we call the known new contract. So before we return to that example, I'm going to show you uh, how the known new contract works. So there's two things that you need to know that from linguistic theory, a sentence can be divided into two parts. This is much easier than traditional grammar. All you need to know is that the beginning of the sentence is the topic position and the end of the position, sentence is the stress position. So no matter what we have, topic is the first part, stress is the last. And it's just the last main noun clause. Doesn't even matter if, you, if we circle different things here, just the end is the stress, beginning is the topic. So in this sentence, topic is accounts of depression, stress, concepts of defeat and entrapment. So the topic position is what orients readers to what the sentence is about. So what we see is the main topic, the main focus of the sentence. And the stress is where readers focus most of their attention. So that's the main area that they concentrate on. We expect the topic position or what the, what the sentence is about to link back to something that's already known, that's already familiar to us as readers. We expect the stress position to introduce new information. So, that a well-written piece that flows will have the topic positions of sentences link back and introduce new information in the stress parts of the position. So in these sentences, we have this sentence ends with the stress of introduce concepts of a defeat and entrapment. The next sentence links back these concepts. This sentence ends with theoretical accounts of anxiety and suicide, the next sentence begins with that. So the stress is always introducing new information and the topic links back. We call this the known new contract. And so in an ideal formulation, and there's lots of variations on this, but one way we can think about this is each sentence begins with something we already know, and then shifts to a new idea that gets repeated at the beginning of the next sentence, linking back, providing reinforcement. Then we go to another new idea, and the next sentence links back. We call this the known new contract. The more complex and technical your subject matter is, the more important it is to do these reinforcements. So let's look back at this example here. 
So why is B easier to read? If we look at this, we see that B is following the known new contract. It ends the first sentence by introducing this stress position, the slipping and falling, and then the next sentence links back, such slipping. The end of the sentence introduces new information. Really, all of this is the end of the sentence, uh, and it's all new information. It's the factors. A, by contrast, does the opposite. So the first sentence stresses slipping and falling, and it's not till the very end of this sentence that we get the link back. Basically, in A, you have to read the sentence twice. Its pattern looks like old topic, new stress, and then we get new information, and then we get the uh, in the stress position, the old. So it's exactly the opposite. So when we're thinking about sentences, and this is a strategy for reading your own writing and seeing how you could see a lot of times where you are missing information or where you're missing key connections. For a reader who is expert in your discipline, they can probably figure it out anyway because they will make those connections. But for someone who is not an expert, those connections are really essential and it will make it even easier for the experts to understand so that they can focus less on your language and more on the content, what you're trying to say. So, we're going to use three steps to improve flow or coherence or, uh, or logic of your sentences. So first, to troubleshoot things, identify the stress, the end, identify topic, the beginning, and then rearrange sentences where they don't follow the new, no new contract to switch them around to put known information in the topic position. And sometimes this means adding information. So let's look at a simple example, and I'm gonna work my way up to more complex examples. The five-year plan does not indicate a clearly defined commitment to long-range environmental research. For instance, the development of techniques rather than the identification and definition of key issues is the subject of the plan where it does address long-range research. So if we go and identify the stress positions, we see that the end of this sentence stretches long-range environmental research, and the end of this one also is stressing long-range research, stressing the same thing. The beginning of the second sentence introduces new information. This should be linking back, but instead we have something we haven't heard of. So to rearrange, we want to flip the sentence. You can go ahead and try and do it yourself before I flip over. Okay, here is how I did how I did it. For instance, where the plan does address long-range research, so putting that early, it focuses on the development of techniques rather than the identification and definition of key issues. Now, I bet many of you are seeing additional ways where you could further improve this sentence, and I agree, it could be, uh, could be improved. I just want to focus on this one concept, rearranging known and new information in sentences. So let's look at another example here. I'd like you to pause this and see if you can figure this out for yourself. What is going wrong with these three sentences here? This is not difficult information, but the way that the sentences are structured makes it much more difficult than it needs to be. So now let me go through this a little bit. So first, if we identify the stress and topic positions, and I am ignoring the last sentence for now. Let's just look at the transition between the first and the last sentence. So we see that the first sentence ends, here is a key word, upheaval, and here's where the connection is at the very end of the last, uh, the second sentence. 
and in the topic position of the sentence where we should be connecting back. We're instead introducing new information. So to revise this, I'm going to flip these two. And so my first, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, so I changed potential triggers for this upheaval include both external factors and internal factors. So this gets upheaval, my connection word, much, much earlier and puts all of this in the stress position. Alternatively, and you guys might have done this, I put this upheaval can be triggered by external factors or internal factors. Now, let me pause here. Some of you are probably thinking, oh, this is passive voice. Yes, it is. And sometimes following the known new contract will put things in passive voice, though not, not always. Uh, now, passive voice has been given a bad reputation. And it's, I have to say, it's been given a bad reputation by English teachers uh, because English is a discipline that really prefers active voice. Active voice is really important when you're talking about people, when you care about the people behind things. And English is a humanities discipline and we care about people. It totally matters whether or not Shakespeare said something versus somebody else said it. Now, most technical disciplines are very focused on things, on objects in the world, in processes or procedures. And in thing-based disciplines, it is not as important who did it. Active voice becomes less important. So it becomes more okay to use passive voice in a technical in a technical field. So if you have been coached or told that active voice is always better, uh, know that I think that that is inaccurate and that it reflects a bias towards humanities and people focused writing rather than technical writing. I have actually published research in a couple of places criticizing English teachers for privileging active voice too much. Passive voice also works. So now let's continue with this, uh, this paragraph here. Uh, and let's take a look at this last sentence. Now, as I highlight the topic position of this third sentence, I run into the question, and the more I look at this sentence, the more I don't understand it. Uh, and one of the questions I have is events. Does it link back? Uh, are events these things? Are these events? Uh, in which case it does link back. But here we call them factors. So I'm a little bit confused on whether this is new or it's actually a continuation of this thought. I actually do think it's a continuation of the thought. So here's how I revised, and this revision could be wrong. And if it is wrong, that is a, a suggestion of why this technique is so important, because it sh this should not be confusing. There should not be room for a doubt. So what I have changed here is I changed factors to events because we should be using the same vocabulary. And I could have changed uh, events right here to factors, but I thought events is probably the more accurate word. So this upheaval can be triggered by external events or internal events. And then I think what this sentence is saying is not all events are triggers, although negative events will be the most obvious triggers. Uh, this may or may not be accurate, but at least it is clear. And if it is clear and inaccurate, it should be relatively, uh, we can fix this to make it clear and accurate. A lot of times as you go through this process of applying the known new contract to your writing, you will see places where 
you are being a little bit inaccurate or you have not made a connection or you have switched a vocabulary word which is what i think happened here and there's no need to do that the more complicated your subject matter is the more you want to repeat keywords so on thursday i am going to review all of this using some different examples again so if you feel like you don't quite get it uh we'll you'll we'll go through it go through it all again what i would like you to do is if you can find a few sentences of your own writing and everybody does this everybody violates the no new contract so find some sentences that do not follow the no new contract try to revise them and bring in your before and your after or if you aren't sure, you're feeling a little bit fuzzy, just bring in a paragraph of your writing that you're pretty sure is not clear, and we'll look at it together. So we'll be looking at these together in the breakout rooms tomorrow. This is one of the most important concepts that I think is important for people in STEM disciplines to understand. And it has made, or really anybody doing any kind of research, and it has made a huge difference in my own writing so that now I come to internalize it. Anytime I'm stuck and I'm like, I don't know how to say this, I think back, what is my, what was the stress of this sentence? Okay, I should link back. Let me go ahead and repeat that. Uh, so it makes a big difference. We're going to be continuing with this on Thursday.